Hello, my name is Danny Wang. I'm happy to present 70 ASL Provision MI with my colleague, Professor Xin Lo from Beijing APL General Hospital. Here is my disclosure. Arterial spin labeling has due benefit at the ultra high field with ingrid SNR, which scales super linearly with B0 as well as prompt blood T1. So when you shift from 3T to 7T, you're going to see a threefold SNR increase. Uh, as a result, uh, you know, at 70, we can reach almost seven millimeter spatial resolution, while it is close to two millimeter at 3T. However, the B0 and the B1 inhomogeneity also increase at ultra high field as shown in this B0 field map. One ppm uh, offset is about 300 hertz at 3T at 70 and it's only 120 hertz uh, at 3T. And uh, the B1 also decrease, you know, it can be 30% at the labeling region. On top of that, we'll have high SAR and short T2, T2 star and a limited coil coverage. Uh, so initial uh, implementation of ASL used the PSL, post ASL, due to its technical simplicity and the lower SAR value. Uh, many groups have tried to optimize the adiabatic inversion pulse uh, for PSL, such as uh, hyperbolic second HS, foresight, TI foresight, which is a uh, piecewise waveform, try to improve the resilience to P1 inhomogeneity, as well as the worst wideband inversion pulse. Here are their waveform, as well as their simulated profile at a different B1 magnitude. Um, here is the uh, the inversion profile uh, in a gel phantom uh, with uh, equal SAR and equal B1 magnitude. Uh, here is the in vivo results uh, using this four different adiabatic pulse. And our results has shown that the worst pulse perform uh, most optimally in terms of the inversion efficiency as well as the inversion band uniformity. Uh, and there's literature about the TI foresight pulse, uh, which perform optimally when the B0 field variation is not large. Uh, our suggestion is worse than maybe more suitable for wide coverage of PSL. Uh, in terms of optimization of PCASO at the 70, uh, there have been several uh, approach. Uh, first is uh, dielectric pads to uh, extend the B1 field and the adjustment of labeling location and they use pre-calibration of B0 offset, and they're using parallel transmission PDX B1 shimming to improve B1 field, as well as optimization of labeling parameters. Um, so here is the uh, work by Dr. Wenming Lu and Dr. Alalis Taragara's group at the NIH. So here is the field map of field inhomogeneity at the three major feeding arteries, and they use gradient to compensate for the uh, phase offset. And this is the without uh, B0 correction, and this is with B0 correction. You can see the dramatic improvement of labeling efficiency, as well as the uh, Picasso perfusion uh, image quality. Um, however, that method requires individual calibration. Um, so another way is to try to uh, use optimized labeling parameter. Uh, for example, uh, our group has proposed a really short uh, IF duration and a gap uh, using 300 and 250 microseconds respectively, try to minimize the phase error accrual during the Picasso pulse. Uh, using this method, we can achieve reliable Picasso uh, imaging um, without any adjustment as shown in the first row. And the, on top of that, you can use PTX pulse, uh, try to push up uh, a PTX B1 shimming, try to push up signal by 10%. Um, and if you don't want to do individual calibration, you can use average uh, B1 shimming, we call universal shimming, uh, try to improve the signal slightly by 5%. Overall, all these three conditions perform really well for PCASO uh, with good test retest reliability. And this uh, bottom row shows the uh, PSL pulse, uh, PSL images uh, acquired using the worst pulse. Um, in terms of the acquisition, uh, there is no consensus. Uh, each method has some pros and cons. 
Uh, this uh, image shows uh, a demo event of work uh, present last year at SMI uh, using simultaneous multi slice API acquisition. It is very fast. Uh, it can achieve uh, almost whole of cerebral cortex coverage as well as multiple time points so you can visualize the dynamics of perfusion signal. Uh, this is by our uh, group using uh, simultaneous multi turbo flash readout with Picasso at 70 and uh, to achieve whole brain coverage and uh, without distortion in the optofrontal and the inferior temporal cortex. Um, and uh, uh, recently we have also uh, optimized the 3D uh, turbo flash readout to achieve isotropic 2x2x2 two by two by two millimeter resolution for whole brain distortion free uh, perfusion images at 70. And you can apply this technique uh, clinically, for example, this is a relatively large GBM case. Uh, you can see the heterogeneous flow, there's hyper and hypo perfusion throughout this tumor region. Um, and uh, um, we can also use uh, a zoomed uh, brace um, Picasso technique to kind of only excite a small region uh, on the, for example, in this case, it's a motor cortex, so we can do very high resolution, ISO uh, one millimeter to for uh, laminar perfusion uh, FMI analysis. Uh, for this study, uh, we can also optimize the labeling plane to be above the circle width, so we can simultaneously um, label the ACMC and the PC uh, to take advantage of the sweet spot of the B1 field. Uh, we can achieve a high labeling efficiency above 80%, while the SAR can even be reduced to 77%. Uh, here shows the work uh, by uh, Camille Ugabio's group using post ASL uh, with 3D uh, echo planar readout uh, to do laminar perfusion analysis. It shows absolute and relative CDF change across the cerebral cortex in the V1 cortex. Uh, here's the work of our group uh, using the <coughs> 3D uh, zoom to grace Picasso technique on the motor and the visual cortex. So showing the uh, CBF profile, laminar profile across the cortex, as well as the arterial transit time with a, a multi-delay approach uh, showing the ATT increase with depths, um, as well as the CBF response in, <clears throat> in response to motor and the visual stimulation. Here I'm going to present four clinical cases provided by Professor Lowe. Case one is a 63-year-old female patient had a glioma resected and received radiation therapy for five years. As you can see, there is post-operative changes in the right posterior parietal uh, cortex uh, with increased DWS signal and the post-conscious enhancement. The task here is to differentiate glioma uh, recurrence from uh, radiation necrosis. Uh, the patient underwent um, PCASO at both 3T and the 7T. And the 7T PCASO, um, both field strengths show the hyperperfusion in the lesion area, but the contrast is much higher uh, on the 7T ASL which improved uh, diagnosis confidence. The final diagnosis of this patient is recurrent glioma WHO grade three to four. Case two is a 54 year old female patient with intermediate headaches for 25 days. Uh, you can see there's a lesion on the T2, SWI, DW and the post contrast in the right temporal frontal region. Uh, the task here is to uh, differentiate glioma uh, from lymphoma and the metastatic tumor. Uh, the patient underwent the ASL scan at both 3T and the 7T. Again, the 7T ASL showed um, much higher resolution and the contrast to delineate hyperperfusion lesion in the um, right temporal frontal region compared to 3T. Uh, which also matches the DWS signal. The patient was finally diagnosed as uh, glioma WHO grade three to four, IDHY type. Uh, case three is a 55 year old woman with probably multinodular vacuolar neuronal tumor. You can see multinodular uh, lesion in the right frontal region. 
The patient also underwent um, ASL at both 30 and 70. Uh, in this case, both field strengths showed a uh, high pole perfusion. However, uh, in the 70, you can see better delineation of the white matter and the gray matter boundary, also the hypoperfusion region, uh, which improved the diagnosis confidence. Um, and the case four is a 56-year-old uh, man with rhyming weakness uh, for one month. And uh, this patient uh, on the top MRA, you can see uh, the left MC uh, occlusive stenosis as well occlusion of the uh, right PCA. And the patient was finally diagnosed as Moya Moya. And the, uh, on both 3T and the 7T Picasso image, you can see widespread hypoperfusion on the left side uh, with extensive uh, arterial transit artifact. However, the arterial transit artifact was more prominent at the 70 compared to 3T. Uh, if you uh, rate the collateral pattern uh, based on the 3T uh, arterial transit effects, it will be underestimated. Again, in this case, 70 uh, matched well with the clinical diagnosis. Um, to summarize, uh, we can see uh, we can achieve a high resolution isotropic two millimeter resolution near whole brain Picasso uh, at 70 with PTX coil and optimized imaging protocol and the parameters. We can even achieve layer dependent perfusion imaging to investigate uh, neurovascular coupling on a fine grain scale at 70. And the initial clinical evaluation should improve the resolution and the contrast for 70 ASL compared to 3T ASL in a variety of clinical cases. Thank you for your interest in 70 ASL. Please do not hesitate to contact me and Professor Lowe for any questions. Thank you.